What's up guys? These past few days have probably been the worst and most stressful of ever running my business, even in comparison to that uh, USDA raid fiasco we had, uh, what is it, a year ago now? I don't remember. But worst case scenario with the HVAC systems kind of happened. I guess not worst, worst case scenario, but you know, we're kind of like inches away from ha having permanent loss on the meat inventory. So you guys know last week, uh, I was complaining about HVAC issues and then kind of all hell kind of broke loose when uh, it got really hot over here in PA, like 95, which doesn't usually get that hot. And I mean, all companies in the area, grocery stores, anyone that's involved in refrigeration has been completely screwed these past few days. Me being one of them. Now, thankfully nothing is catastrophic yet, uh, but we're gonna go around and show you guys what has happened. I have not slept since Tuesday and it's Friday now. I have not had more than one meal a day. I have lost a lot of weight. My face looks very different than it did a week ago. Uh, but things look like we're gonna, we're gonna even them out. The insurance company is gonna cover stuff, but the way you guys can help me out is if, if we can get more meat out of this freezer, it will help. So if you place an order, Guys, try not to order like 20, one of 20 different things. You know, like, oh, I want this, I want that. Some people do that, which is fine once in a while, but it, it, it's gonna be difficult for us to fill those orders. If you can, please, like, if you order three or four items and a larger amount of that, you know, just like larger orders, but less variety on them would help us a lot because I'll, when I show you the freezer, you'll know why. Um, so I'm gonna walk outside and show you guys uh, what the problem is. So this has been, nothing short of like complete nightmare i feel bad for these guys that are i got my this electrician and plumber guy that are very nice that have helped me a lot i mean they're getting paid and they're gonna get paid but uh you know they've been but between tuesday and wednesday we were here like 24 hours between both days so like 12 hours a day like on the hour and then uh yesterday they were here all day we were melting the ice and the evaporators i'll show you in the freezer and then uh, today they had to come back too, and we're working uh, working even more hours today. But hopefully we can uh, we can save this. So it got so bad with the freezer that I rented a reefer trailer. So I was like, okay, worst case scenario, if we can't get the freezer fixed, we'll put everything in the reefer trailer. Guess what happened? Now, now the reefer trailer is at 11 degrees, but. Last night, the reefer was a negative one. It was working. Didn't put any meat in it, thankfully, because in the morning when I got here, the reefer was at 60. The repair guy was here fixing the reefer that I rented. <laughs> I rented this just yesterday. Came yesterday, ran okay, failed in the middle of the night. So if I had put my meat in there, would have been screwed. So now I, I thought having a reefer, having the refrigerated trailer, that'd be my backup. I could put all the meat in there and we'll be safe. But the freak, the, what's the chance that the reefer that I rent fails too when all my freezer units are failing? So that's not, not I, don't, I don't even trust that now. I don't really know what to do. So we're in here in the back of my, uh, in the back of my warehouse. This is the reliable freezer unit that was working that was doing most of the cooling in the freezer that has failed and not been so reliable and has been causing this issue. This is the unit that is shot. The compressor went, we tried to fix it. I put about 10,000 in it trying to get it to run, hasn't been working. This is like the 30 year old unit that has been the reliable one that's been keeping this freezer alive. So uh, last week, this completely failed. Couldn't get it to run anymore. Compressor's completely shot. So when that happened, we had a little less cooling in there. This unit that I never had any issues with, when the heat started and it was overheating, this failed which made it so uh, basically my whole freezer was compromised. It wasn't cooling enough. Uh, one company came out, cleaned the coils, got it back up and running. Inside the evaporators, the coils, there was about like, man, maybe four or five inches of solid block of ice on the evaporators. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with HVAC work, I had to go up there with a hot water hose and I was hosing it off in that ice cold freezer for like two hours straight just to melt all the ice. So. There, there's some mechanical issues wrong with the that my good unit that 
uh, exacerbated in the heat. So it was fine until those few hot days. Now, the brand of that unit is Crack, and ironically, that company went out of business. Oh, I wonder why. So it's kind of hard to get replacement parts. Maybe if they had reasonable equipment, they wouldn't have went out of business in the first place, but here I am stuck with this piece of Crack, this piece of Crack equipment. But, uh, and I'll show you guys on the roof later after we go in the freezer. We had an old, well, let me, let me actually show you guys in the, in the room over there before, uh, before we, uh, before I talk about that. So we're coming in the warehouse side now. So this, this door will actually be where I'm going to, oh wait, I opened the wrong door. So now this is where that reefer is parked. So hypothetically, you know, we, we open this, we, we open this up, we got the cool reefer, we can put all our meat in here and operate the business out of it. If the reefer was reliable and I trusted it. So the problem with reefers is the, 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 it stays cold, it's very cold temperature, but the, the walls of the reefer trailer, they're not well insulated. So if that reefer fails, in two hours, it's going to 70 degrees. If this freezer fails, it only loses like one degree an hour. It's, the freezer is much better insulated than, than the, the reefer. So let me show you guys what's going on in the freezer. So I don't know if you guys remember the configuration, but that this is over here now from there and everything is on pallets. We basically put all the meat on pallets to get it ready to go in the reefer just in case. And we still got a lot of stuff to do in here, but thankfully we're down to 15 degrees now, which is good because it's like 90 outside right now. So overnight, I think this will go down to five. Yeah, this is good. It's at 14 over here, 13 over here on this side with these two running. So these two evaporators are for that crack unit outside, our alleged good unit. There was about five inch block of ice on the unit. So these guys went up there with torches for hours to melt all the ice down to get the airflow to get this back up and running and cooling. So the, the, path, the nightmare of the past three days has been keeping these running to keep this freezer cool enough. That's basically what we've been doing in anticipation of replacing that old failed unit. So these two evaporators were hooked up to the failed compressor, the failed condenser outside. That, that old broken one that you guys saw was opened up and not working at all, completely shot. These were hooked up to that, but... Now those two fans that are blowing now that were hooked up to the old condenser, that old broken unit, are now hooked up to the unit that was powering this old freezer. So it's smaller, as you can imagine, for this freezer, but there's a condenser on the roof that we like emergency piped over to those evaporators to get that running too. That we just started running now a few hours ago to try to get the temperature down of this freezer. And this is all in anticipation of getting uh, the finalized quote to the insurance company to replace that broken unit. So what we're doing now is basically trying to prevent the freezer from completely breaking down and losing all the meat inventory. And then once the insurance company approves the claim and we get the check, it, I mean, it's it's very, very expensive to replace that. Each of these units are like 40, 50,000, not including labor. So once the insurance company approves the claim for that new unit and we get it in and install it, that's basically, we're trying to buy time. We're trying to buy like a week or two of time to get that new unit in, get the claim approved and get everything in. And then the freezer will be fine. My, I might also spray foam it, which is the main thing I'm worried about is trusting the reefer trailers for like a day or two with my meat in them while we spray foam the freezer, which would insulate it so well that even if there is an issue, it's not as much of an emergency. So uh, as I said earlier, the way you guys can, uh, the way you guys can help me out is, uh, is by placing an order uh, that's, you know, decent size two $300 that has like not too many different items on it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you place like a really large order and it has 10 different items, that's fine. Just don't place like a $200 order with 15 different items because I'm not sure if we're gonna, if, if we get like an influx of orders of people trying to help, might cause an issue with us trying to 
to fill all those orders in time. But it should be fine. Either way, it should be fine. It's just a lot easier. I'm just telling you guys, it's a lot easier on us if you order like two ribeye packages, then what we have to do is just put the ribeyes in the box and send them out. And uh, what that'll do is that'll clear out enough of the meat inventory that our risk is lower. So when we go to put this meat in the trailers on the weekend to, to fix all the units and spray film everything, obviously if you guys bought a lot of meat this weekend, then uh, then there's less, less risk. Because worst case scenario, if the, the trail there's an issue with the reefer trailers, but we sold all of our meat or most of the valuable meat, then I'm not as stressed out. So the more the more meat we sell this weekend and the more stuff we get out of there, the better it will be. So I didn't show you guys that unit on the roof yet. That's hooked up, which is cooling it down a lot. Uh, got a little tied up. Those guys left, but I'm actually I'm up in the freezer right now. I'm using the torch to melt the rest of the ice on those evaporators. Uh, so I'm just outside, just warming my hands up right now. So I'll try to get as much ice off as I can with that torch, and then uh, and then I'll uh, I'll turn it on and leave for the night. It should be good. It's freezer's down below 10 degrees. We got it to nine, and then uh, so we should be good. We're, we should be 100% in the clear. I think I said already, but the only thing I'm worried about is uh, when we go to put the the meat in the reefers. Hopefully the reefers hold up, and uh, and then we can spray foam the freezer get everything fixed and then get everything back in. Yeah, so I'm gonna warm my hands up, go back in there, finish that off, turn it on, and then we'll show you guys the, the outdoor unit. I think when I come in tomorrow, it's gonna to be, it's gonna be zero degrees. But the reason we didn't turn that other unit on is because there was a leak in it. And now what we're doing is we're just running it and losing gas. So we're losing money, but we don't really have an option. You know, hey, an, ex an extra few hundred dollars in gas every week, we'll have the problem fixed in two weeks. So another expense, but I think overall, I mean, excluding the contracting work and what the insurance has to pay for, you know, the, just renting one reefer is 150 a day, which isn't too crazy. We're losing 50 a day in gas. A few hundred a day isn't the end of the world, but, uh, We'll see. We got we got we can get through this kind of heat wave of a week, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's nice and cool. It does warm up again on that weekend, but by then we should have uh, the reefers ready to, uh, to to load up with stuff. Listen, I don't know who gave you guys my phone number, but all customer service is through the email address, guys. Info at frankiestrangemeat.com. If you're calling me about an order. <laughs> While I'm losing my mind over here with these HVAC units, I'm not gonna pick up my phone. Please send us an email. I can't help you over the phone anyway. Maybe once I actually have some extra money, we could hire some customer service and answer phones for you guys, but not right now. So this back part of the building is where you guys see me most of the time. This is the refrigerator here on the left, and this is the meat room on the right. So here we got the ladder set up. We're gonna go up to show you guys that unit that was kind of like ghetto piped over to those two evaporators. This was kind of like an emergency job just to get it cool enough. So this is the vent fan that was installed for the kitchen equipment. This is the condenser unit that is supposed to cool that old uh, that old freezer that we don't use, that we're using to ferment it. That fan is spinning so fast, it looks weird on camera, but it's not. It's, in, in real life, it's spinning like a normal fan. So this used to be piped down to that glass door freezer. Now we piped it over to where the old evaporators are in the big freezer and down there is where the units are so up there we have the crack aka crap unit second is the broken freezer which is piped up to evaporators which this is now piped to so this which is a little smaller is replacing that old one temporarily so we get the new one to replace it and not have to deal with this nightmare 
And this third ancient thing is the most reliable one we've had. So we, we just put some gas in this right now today and it's working. The, the lines are all iced up, it's cold. The only problem is there's a slight leak in the evaporator. So this might cost me, you know, a few hundred dollars every few days, but it's better than being out of business, right? So this was like a ghetto piping job that no, like a lot of HVAC guys wouldn't even think of this. The guy that did this is uh, kind of knows his stuff. So the fact that we were able to get this over here to temporarily help is, is a pretty big, a pretty big deal. And then once we get the new unit in, this can just be like emergency backup if we ever need it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this guys is just me waiting to be abducted by a Russian princess so we can sell some of the gold in her Moscow palace and get a nice new building one day. But right now we're just trying to make it work. Imagine if I charged what I should for, uh... I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, if I never gave all that money away, I could really use it right now. Uh, I, I paid, it cost me about 2000. I had the roofs of the fridge and freezer painted white just last week, actually. So, hey, that might have saved me. I don't know how much it helped, but I, I convenient, like you could see the, the top of that roof is white. This is white. They were black. So, to my understanding, the white roof is like 30, 40, 50 degrees cooler than the black roof. So, who knows? That, that might have saved me a few degrees on the freezer, which would have made the difference between me having to take the meat out or not. Um, so, that might have helped. But uh, now it should, it should be smooth sailing. We got these three units running pretty good. Uh, I'm going to get another canister of acetylene gas and torch the rest of that ice off maybe tomorrow or Monday or something whenever we can get the gas. Um, also, tomorrow morning, got to go. Maybe This guy's selling some used evaporators and some equipment that we might be able to use, so I'm going to go see if I can pick that up tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, we should be okay for now. And then the, ne the next big thing is going to be uh, next weekend or maybe the weekend after, depending on when we can get the equipment, we're going to uh, we're gonna put all the meat in the trailers, spray from the freezer, and then uh, and that's gonna buy me a lot of time if there's any emergency. If that freezer was spray foamed, instead of going up to 20 degrees, it would have maybe gone up to like 10. There wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been as nearly as bad of an emergency. And the spray foam would pay itself back probably in two years. So it's not like an immediate payoff. That's a, that helps a crazy amount, but. Uh, it's not like a, a long-term thing, like a lot of things that you spend money on to try to save money on energy costs. This is fa this is fairly immediate, because uh, I might know who knows. I might only need this building a few years, so the spray foam is worth it with this old freezer. So just keep keep it fine for now. The freezer is used. We have plenty of space to operate here. But I'll say it another time, guys. Help us if there was any if there was any week for you guys to help me. <laughs> it's this week. Because if, if that, if we had all the meat out of that freezer and it, it, like, at least if we can sell like half of it, I, it would save me, a, it would, it would help a ton. It'd be a lot less to put in the, in the trailer and worst case scenario, if there was, if, if the reefer fails, and I, I think I explained this earlier, but I'll go in a little more detail. If one of these freezer units goes out, I got 10 hours of leeway to fix it. If that reefer fails overnight, it'll go up to 70 degrees in like three or four hours. So yeah, the reefer is should, hypothetically should not break down and it's an emergency if our freezer breaks down. But if I have to put my meat in there to, to get this freezer fixed temporarily for a day or two, I mean, I'll sleep in my car just to watch it. But I just, I would feel a lot safer if we sold a lot of meat of the meat. If we could knock the inventory down 10, 20, even 30%, that, that'll really help. So, again, it's not the end of the world. And what's the chance that the reefer breaks down? I say that as the reefer I rented yesterday broke down 10 hours after I got it in here. But I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm completely over it. I'm so over it. I don't trade stocks because it's all rigged. But I was so busy. I got, like, AMD calls yesterday at 11 a.m. They were worth 7000 Today they were worth 0 so I can't be I can't be doing any nonsense. I would have lucked out though and paid for this. Anyway, thank you guys for joining. 
Uh, I don't I don't think I'm gonna do a vlog this week. Uh, I will mention that. I'll, I'll mention now. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a shorter vlog too, and show you guys what's going on. It's not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to show you guys as much stuff. But we, but we do have a few new things coming in tomorrow. So it's only Friday. <laughs> So I got to get through the order Saturday, Sunday, and then uh, Monday and Tuesday. And then hopefully we can sort everything out by the end of the next week and be back an operational in a reasonable amount of time. Give you guys a little bonus footage. I forgot some things. So what's helped me a lot get through these past few days is the male virility and the kratom. Well, not kratom, but kratom extract. That's helped a lot. The main problem is it's hot as hell outside and it's high EMF. So not it's hard to feel good, but... The other thing is my stomach has like shrunk. Like I can only eat half as much as I normally do, which is, uh, which I guess is his pros and cons, but I don't sleep as well. But the reason, <laughs> I wanna show you guys the extent of my mechanical ability out here. So this is a hose. We got a Y2 two, two prong attachment. And then we got the misters cooling off the back of the, the units. So like one's misting, this is misting this one, and we got that mister on the old one. So this is this is good to like temporarily cool it off in uh, in emergencies. I mean, you know, if you have new equipment and it's maintained properly, you don't have to do stuff like that. But if it gets to 95 outside, or well, everything started failing at 85. So having that hose on there makes probably makes a threshold from like 85 to like low 90s so hypothetically if i had those hoses running the whole time before this fiasco happened we might not have had a fiasco but the, the problem with a lot of these old hvac units they're really finicky even if you do what you're supposed to do to fix them it actually makes the problem worse it's 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 really strange but i guess we're just gonna have to sue that cocksucker that uh did the work for us in the first place, but by then he might be in Mexico. 